could secretes the antibacterial lysosome. Uh, first line. Panet cells. Very good. So the crypts of liver kun is present in the intestinal mucosa. So that will be producing. In that, among that, the panet cells will produce. Yeah, right. Next, second one. Which of the following options best represents the enzyme composition of pancreatic juice? What would it be can, that? It can't be B and D. Uh, B and D, yeah, right. Because it has pepsin in that. Pepsin yeah. cannot be the answer. Because pepsin is present in the gastric juice. And A is also not, not the answer. Because in the A also you have the pepsin, right? It is C then. Yeah, C. And uh, you, if, if D is not the answer, because of the renin. Renin also will be present for children in the digestion, that too in the stomach. You can't find the renin in the pancreatic juice. So the correct option is option C. Lipase, um, amylase, trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, carboxypeptidases. Just remind one thing, in the pancreatic juice itself, you will have all the three chemical bond uh, lysis, like uh, all the three hydrolytic enzymes. The hydrolytic enzymes for carbohydrates, that is amylase, the hydrolytic enzymes for fats, that is lipase. The hydrolytic enzymes for proteins, that is trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, carboxypeptidases. Okay. And next question. A baby boy aged two years is admitted to play school and passes through the dental check. So the dentist observed that the boy had 20 teeth, which teeth were absent. So you have to remind the dental formula. What is the pediatric dental formula? Uh, for kids, it's going to be... Uh, for kids, it's going to be 2102. So it's going to be premolars that are missing. Yeah, premolars are missing. Very good. So 2102 by 2102. If it is the adult dental formula? For adult, 2123. 2123 by 2123. Right. Which hormone do stimulate the production of pancreatic juice and bicarbonate? So what is the hormones which makes the release of pancreatic juice and bicarbonate? So bicarbonate is being released to control or to act as a buffer for the acidic chyme. So high amount of acid will come in from the stomach. In order to act as a buffering agent, bicarbonate ions will be released. So that too, the bicarbonate ions is more released from the mucosa. So, for this, the answer, what would be the two hormones? C. Cholecystokinin and secretin, right? And, and one more thing, and what is the one which makes the liver to release the production? That is also cholecystokinin and secretin. Both. But it will act on the liver as well as on the pancreas. Okay, Fifth one, which of the following gods the opening of hepatopancreatic duct in the duodenum? Sphincter of OD. Right, very good. Sphincter of OD. Uh, you can see the pyloric sphincter near the pyloric part. And ileocecal wall, once the foot crosses the ileocecal wall, you will never get back it again. And semilunar walls are present in the heart. So. Yes, ma'am. In the stomach, gastric acid is secreted by especially the gastric acid is secreted by. Is it D? Yeah, parietal cells. Parietal cells will secrete the gastric acid. Very good. Then then that is not present in the succus entericus. So what is the meaning of succus entericus? Intestinal juice. Yes, intestinal juice, otherwise we call it as circus enterocus. And the question is, what is not present in circus enterocus in, in this four? D. What? Uh, answer is D, nucleases. Nucleases will not be there. Nucleus cyrases will be there, but nucleases will not be there. Right? Uh, the primary dentition in the human differs from the permanent dentition in not having. Uh, 
having very easy question on this one primary dentation and secondary dentation the only difference will be premolars that is more of a uh, yeah premolars will not be there right and next gastric juice of infants contain gastric juice of infants particularly the infants we don't have that enzyme uh, a a because renin will be there pepsinogen lipase and renin so usually the infants will drink the milk so uh, the milk in the milk we have the milk protein casein is the milk protein and milk fat as well as the uh, pepsinogen is will also act. pepsinogen mainly we lacks on the protein lipase will acts on the fat renin will acts on the casein so with all these things so it will act on the milk so that's why this is the composition and next which of the following statements is not correct see it's not stomach It's not stomach. Yeah, it is there in duodenum. The initial step in the digestion of milk in humans is carried out by. The initial step. Initial step. First, the renin is there, I know, but I don't know if it's the initial step. It is renin only. Initially, they didn't ask you you about the infant or adult. So usually, first the renin will convert the milk into curdling. So the curdling of the milk will be done by renin. Usually, it will be renin. You can't find drips in in the stomach, right? So first, milk will be digested in the stomach only. That is renin. And fructose is absorbed into the blood through mucosal cells of intestine by a process called. Uh, it's facilitated called as the medium. facilitated transport f for f you can remind like that also fructose will be transported as facilitated transport mom there is like there is a group of examples for this part right for what uh, for active transport simple diffusion yes, okay uh, yeah that that's a bit hard for me to remember okay right so for active transport just remain glucose and amino acids glucose and amino acids will go by active transport and so in some cases the amino acids and water all these things will go by simple diffusion in some cases they will be giving like uh, facilitated diffusion with glucose also glucose and amino acids some sometimes glucose and amino acids will go by facilitated diffusion but the first primary thing you have to remind is fructose fructose will always go by facilitated diffusion and active transport usually the facilitated diffusion is one of the type of passive transport so it will go from higher concentration to lower concentration but with the help of carrier proteins if the carrier proteins is coming into the play then that will be facilitated transport which is done for fructose usually so and the active transport go with glucose and amino acids it needs energy okay hello yes ma'am you got the point just go with glucose and amino acids active transport so usually fructose for facilitated transport so select the correct match of the digestive products in the column 1 and column 2 okay yes. yeah so there is a correct match what is that the oh. large intestine cannot be the answer Yeah, large intestine. Yeah, large intestine because large intestine will absorb only excess amount of water. In the other three, is oh, I don't know. Is it A? I don't know. Yeah, you just remind that fructose and sodium will go by facilitated transport. 
not by reactive absorption, passive absorption. So this is also wrong, right? Option D is also wrong. Option B and option D you can eliminate. Yes, ma'am. And next, what about option A and option C? <coughs> Yes, thing. Is it A? Okay. No, it is not A. So usually, uh, why mostly we used to confuse this. So glycerol and fatty acids will get absorbed in the ileum. So usually the most of the digestion will get completed in the duodenum, but not the absorption. So here they asked about the absorption. So the glycerol and fatty acids are being absorbed from the ileum in the form of chylomicrons. Okay. So if it is an absorption, you have to remind about the ileum, ileum part. So around 90% of the absorption will take place in the ileum. So what would be the answer? Option C, glycine and glucose. It is small intestine. They have, they doesn't note you like duodenum, ileum, and cecum. It's not like that. They have given it a small intestine. We all know that small intestine will have the most of the absorption, whatever may be the part. And that too, active absorption. So glucose and glycine will go with active absorption. I already told you in the previous question. So option C. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Next, 14 month. A healthy person eats the following diet. So yeah, this, uh, like this question, it has been asked many times. Just take a pen and paper. Do you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, here, the thing is... Uh, you have to know about the respiratory quotients. So I think, what is the respiratory quotient for carbohydrates or the physiological value? Carbohydrates. What? what? Uh, I don't know. It is four calories, four kilocalories per gram. For carbohydrates and proteins, it will be four kilocalories. And fat is nine, right? Yeah, fat is nine. Right? You just remind that and just see the question. So a healthy person eats the following diet. 5 grams of raw sugar. So just write 5 into 4. I mean, sugar doesn't come under fat. It's sweet, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm, I'm telling you. The respiratory question will be 4. So 5 grams into 4. For every 1 gram of sugar, which is a carbohydrate, you will get 4 kilocalories of energy. Fat is 9, right? This is raw sugar. Sugar is carbohydrate, right? And next, 4 grams of albumin. Albumin is? I don't know. Protein. Albumin is protein. So what would be the thing? 4 into? 4. 4, right. 10 grams of pure buffalo ghee, adulterated with 2 grams of vegetable, or vegetable ghee. So, adulterated means it was impurified. So, they added 2 grams of vegetable ghee in the 10 grams of veg buffalo ghee. So, 10 plus 2? 10 plus 10 into 2, right? No, no, no. 10 plus 2. Because they added another 2 grams to this 10 grams. Okay. So, 12. 12 into 9. Okay. Okay. And next, I can see here, and 5 grams of lignin. So, uh, usually lignin, cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins will never digest in our body. So, those are undigested. We're left as undigested. So, you should not write anything in this. There is no any calorific value for this. So, how much calories he is likely to get? Yeah. Oh, 
one four four. Yeah, one four four is the answer. Got it? How to answer this this type of question? Usually in the digestion and absorption, you have to remind about the calorific value. So according to the product, you have to think whether it is a carbohydrate, protein, or fat. According to that, and whether it is it will digest in our body or not. Okay, next fifteenth one. Which enzyme are likely to act on the baked potatoes eaten by a man? Starting from the mouth, and it moves down to the alimentary canal. Usually, the baked potatoes will contain the starch. So, where the first digestion of starch will take place? A mouth. So it's going to be C. Salivary amylase. Next, uh, the starch will not digest in the stomach. So you just skip it, and we'll go with pre, uh, pancreatic amylase. Next, in the circus centricus with the disaccharide. So like maltase. So the answer will be option C, right? Absolutely. Anxiety and eating spicy food together in otherwise normal human may lead to what it will take place. Digestion. What? Indigestion. Very good. In in digestion. For this, for its activity, carboxypeptidase is required. So one metal ion will be required for the activity of carboxypeptidase. What is that? Is it zinc? Yeah, right. You you can remind this as usually the banana will have a good amount of zinc. So so that's why we have to consume bananas. So for this carboxypeptidase activity. And. Where do certain symbiotic microorganisms normally occur in human body? Cecum. Yeah, cecum. Very good. And two friends are eating together on the dining table. One of them suddenly started coughing while swallowing some food. This coughing would have been due to improper movement of. So why he is coughing suddenly while drink while eating? What is the reason? Epiglottis. Epiglottis. Accidentally, the epiglottis will get opened. when we are talking so that's why uh, the adults use it to the older people use it to tell you should not talk while eating epiglottis the purplish red pigment of rhodopsin is contained in the rod types of photoreceptor cells of the human eye which is a derivative of no oh, but where is this in textbook i couldn't find it in the ncert yeah so usually the concept of neat is they won't ask they won't give you everything in the neat textbook they'll tell you just like in the digestion and absorption the vitamins and all the minerals also will be the part you have to learn everything about the vitamins and minerals its deficiency its hypervitaminosis all this stuff okay okay then what is the primary vitamin which is essential for our eyesight is it a vitamin a yeah vitamin a retinol so usually retinol cannot be synthesized by mammals so it it has to be provided through diet only okay. and next one of the constituents of pancreatic juice which is poured into the duodenum in the humans um uh, mostly pancreatic juice yeah which one is the constituent what is the answer for this One is the direct thing about the pancreatic juice. It can't be D. It can't be. Just remind one thing. So all these are pancreatic enzymes, but the thing is, always they will be released in the inactive form. Okay. So the answer will be. Are they asking for the inactive or active? inactive they are asking for how it is poured into the duodenum whether it is poured as an inactive form or an active form that is the concern of the question okay. for example if it is the stomach so it is pepsin cannot be cannot be directly poured as a pepsin it will be poured as pepsinogen only if it is poured as a pepsin then what it will take it will digest the own mucosa itself when the food enters only it will be converted into the active form when the acidic kind comes into the duodenum then only the trypsinogen will be converted into trypsin by the enzyme by the enzyme called enterokinase enterokinase is the one which converts the trypsinogen to trypsin 
only when the acid chyme comes to the duodenum okay you cannot write it as chymotrypsin or trypsin because those two are been active for active forms it is been released as inactive form only trypsinogen over the uh, pepsinogen is inactive right yeah pepsinogen is inactive what is the answer i can get it you have to write the inactive form so among all these four the trypsinogen is inactive form okay. trypsinogen is converted to trypsin by enterokinase thereafter the trypsin will convert the chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin you know this right yes ma'am yeah. okay uh, here you have the adult dental formula I just tell it c yeah right very good carrier ions like sodium facilitate the absorption of substance like so usually i'll tell you one concept here in order to remind this question so the sodium potassium pump will comes under active transport because for every when the sodium was been inside the cell so for depolarization purpose during the depolarization purpose when the sodium gets into the cell in order to move the sodium out of the cell so usually for every three sodium we will take two potassium into the cell for this we need energy this type of transportation we call it as active transport so during this energy with the use of this energy Uh, this sodium and potassium drive additionally the glucose and amino acids also will be taken into the cell okay, okay the answer will be is it fructose in some amino acid no no it is amino acids and glucose no, but uh, okay so usually the for carrying the fructose it needs carrier proteins okay for carrying the fructose it is carrier proteins to be known needed but for sodium with the sodium facilitating by the sodium it will be glucose and amino acid okay. sodium is not a carrier protein it will be acting like an ion so it is not a carrier protein always if it is a carrier protein then it will be the fructose so the answer is amino acids and glucose even for the active transport also we have the facilitated type we have the facilitated active transport and facilitated passive and next 24th one if for some reason our globulin cells are non functional what will be the adverse effects what will the globulin cells produce in the stomach the mucus mucus okay if the mucus option d smooth uh, down will be affected right very good if for some reason the parietal cells of the gut of epithelium is partially non functional what would be the like to likely to happen what is for the parietal cells uh, they secrete uh... parietal cells or we also call it as oxyntic cells okay. chief cells or peptic cells will secrete pepsinogen so parietal cells and oxyntic cells will secrete hcl hydrochloric acid will be produced by parietal cells or oxyntic cells okay now you can tell me so ph is not going to fall so usually ph will not fall abruptly because if the hcl is not produced ph will rise right so hcl is the major thing for falling the ph no that is not the answer if hcl is not properly produced how the ph will rise yes a i am not sure okay i just me this let me know so it doesn't uh, pancreatic why it will come for the pancreatic enzymes pancreas will be there nearby the duodenum so we are talking about the gastric uh, secretions then so, pepsin won't be working well yeah protein. very good proteins will not be adequately hydrolyzed by pepsin because the pepsinogen will get activated by uh, hcl 
yeah hcl and that hcl has to be produced from parietal cells if the parietal cells is partially non functional the proteins will not be adequately hydrolyzed which is an indirect thing so jaundice is a disorder of jaundice is a disorder of jaundice is digestive right yeah liver will come under digestive system jaundice is digestive system what is jaundice actually so it was a uh, uh, yeah. yeah it was a liver disorder right it produced more amount of bilirubin into the blood more amount of bilirubin will be stored due to proper improper disposal of the bilirubin so which is an abnormality of the liver so the liver will comes under the digestive system yes when best feeding is replaced by less nutritive food low in a protein and calories in infants below the age of 1 they most likely to be suffer from uh, marasmus so if it is above one year uh b what if it is above one year then the answer should be b fasciocar yeah just remind uh, mostly most of the people will confuse in this question k for fasciocar k for kid just remain for kids will get the quasi occur for babies will get for mother mother feeding babies will get marasmus okay next 28 an any infant may be feeding entirely on the mother's milk so which is white in color but the stools of the infant passes is quite yellowish so what is this yellowish color is due to is it bile pigments yeah right Which one of the following statement is true regarding the digestion and absorption of food in humans? So the true statement. Uh, I don't know this one. Okay, right. uh it is uh, here the b is wrong actually because the chylomicrons are the small lipoprotein particles that is transported from intestine into the blood with the help, it will be not be carrying by the blood capillaries what it will carry it will go through lacteals so lacteals are the lymphatic vessels present in the intestine so through that the fat will be absorbed so option b is wrong and option c about 30 about 60% of the starch it is not 60% it is 30% of starch okay oxyntic cells in our stomach secrete pro enzyme called pepsinogen so usually oxyntic cells will secrete hcl not pepsinogen okay yeah. hcl and intrinsic factor not pepsinogen So let's see, go with the option A. Fructose and amino acids are absorbed through intestinal mucosa with the help of cat. So this option is also wrong. So usually they have to given it as glucose, not fructose. I hope there is a problem with the question. Here it is not fructose. It should be glucose. Next, which one of the following? pairs of food components in the human reaches the stomach totally undigested without any digestion it reaches the stomach fat mm fat and is it starch no starch will digest in the mouth itself by salivary amylase yes, cellulose 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 will not digest in our body yes yeah, so that cannot be the answer either so what they ask it is what will be come to the stomach totally undigested so they are not asking whether it will digest in our stomach or not what it will come undigested into our stomach then this should be d the answer is b fat and cellulose cellulose will not digest in our body at any how 
so that will come undigested to the stomach as well as the fat also will not digest in the mouth so that also will come undigested in the stomach you got the point whatever yes. whatever the answer consists of starch you just remove it a c and d all the three you just take it off okay next 31 which of the fall which one of the following is the correct matching of site of action on the given substrate enzyme acting upon that and the end product so first they have given the site of action small intestine stomach duodenum and they have given the enzyme so pepsin lipase and this end products so correct answer you have to tell the correct answer for this um i don't know this is in this part i i get confused i exactly don't know where, where uh, which what gives the gist of it okay let me tell you small intestine proteins pepsin pepsin will not produce in the small intestine right pepsin will yeah. be pro produced in the stomach so this is the wrong answer and next uh, stomach fats lipase and muscles so what about this what do you think of this uh no ma'am no this is also wrong because muscles will not be produced in the stomach and the major fat digestion will not takes place in the stomach so this is also wrong next duodenum triglycerides trypsin to monoglycerides is it so trypsin will not acts on the glycerides lipase yes. pancreatic lipase will act not like this uh, trypsin trypsin will acts on the proteins so this is also wrong and next option d small intestine starch amylase pancreatic amylase will go with disaccharides later in the sucker centricus you will have the enzyme called maltase that will digest the disaccharide into monosaccharides so option d is right so okay next what will happen if the secretion of parietal cells of the gastric glands is blocked with an inhibitor this is same like the previous question you can answer this very easily is what? it uh, a yeah the parietal cells will secrete the hcl so if the parietal cells was blocked the hcl secretion will be absent and the inactive pepsinogen is not converted into active enzyme pepsin right which one of the following is a fat soluble vitamin and related deficiency vitamin a vitamin b e and k these four vitamins are fat soluble vitamins what is its correct matching for deficiency so just remind one thing retinol retinol will comes under vitamin a and xeroptalmia yeah this is the right answer and methylcobalamin for well, methylcobalamin is not a fat soluble vitamin vitamin b12 calciferol vitamin d is a fat soluble vitamin but for pellagra it is niacin vitamin b3 that is not a match correct match ascorbic acid is curvy this is right but vitamin c is not a fat soluble vitamin that is a water soluble vitamin so the correct answer is vitamin uh, so option e Oh. Got it? Okay. Okay. Examination of blood of a person suspected of having anemia shows a large immature nucleated erythrocytes without hemoglobin. Supplementing his diet with which of the following will elevate his symptoms? Means the person is having lack of hemoglobin in the erythrocytes, and I... the, so what should be supplemented? Iron. no what is what is the vitamin for the essentiality of uh, maturation for the rbc for maturation of the rbc what is the essential vitamin i don't know but uh, isn't isn't hemoglobin the like iron contain no hemoglobin okay so for a proper functioning of the hemoglobin and for the proper growth and formation of rbc we need vitamin b9 and uh, vitamin b12 what are the vitamin b9 and b12 well, i i don't know ma'am i didn't find all this thing in 
NCRT. I know I want it in our college books. Oh, okay, right. So these are all like uh, vitamin deficiencies. So folic acid. Uh, Could you tell me where I can find this vitamin deficiency? So I did see a multiple questions from this part. Okay, tomorrow I'll tell you the thing, everything about the vitamins and their deficiencies. Okay. 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 So folic acid and methyl cobalamin. So if the person is lacking methyl cobalamin, then the person will have perinaceous anemia. And if the person is lacking of the folic acid, then the person will have microcytic anemia. Means the RBC size will be decreases. If the folic acid is there, the functioning hemoglobin will not be there. So both are essential. For growth of the RBC, folic acid is essential. For proper uh, functioning hemoglobin, methyl cobalamin, vitamin B12 is essential. So it is option C. So that's why usually the pregnant woman, for they will be asking to take more folic acid because she needs more amount of blood for the baby also. So to survival for the fetus, more amount of blood will be required. So that blood will be substituted more, taking more of folic acid. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, tomorrow I'll uh, let you know about these things. Next. Secretin and cholecystokinin are the digestive hormones which is secreted. By. What part will secrete that? Which helps for the release of bile juice and pancreatic juice. Sami, so esophagus. Can't be esophagus. That will be produced by Bruner's glands. Bruner's glands will produce these two hormones. Where the Bruner's glands are located? Uh, it's in ileum, right? No, it's in duodenum. Submucosa of duodenum, the Bruner's glands. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. Bruner's glands are very important question. They have been asked many times. It is present in the submucosa of duodenum. Next, 36. Epithelial cells of the intestine involved in the food absorption have on their surface. So what it will have on the surface for more absorption? A microvilli. Yeah, microvilli. Well, it will increase more surface area, right? A patient is generally advised to specially consume more meat, lentils, milk and eggs. So what would he suffering from? What is he suffering from? Is it uh, beef? Quashiokar, right. These are all our white protein supplementation. Usually when you when you go to the foreign abroad countries, so they will be telling the meat as protein. Because the meat consists of the major constituent of meat is protein. So that is option B. Next, I think this comes under vitamin deficiency. Just go with the other question. You can tell this one, 39. Uh, the rich source of vitamin B12 are. So what it could be? So I'll give a clue for this. You just try to answer the question. So usually the vegetarians will have the deficiency of vitamin B12. You can't find vitamin B12 in veggies. You can't find. Yeah, you can't find And one it, it, can, what? it can't be B or it has green germs. Yeah, it can't be B. It can't be D, it has carrot. Yeah, it can be D also. So it should be A or C. Uh, it can't be C also. You can't find vitamin B12 in rice. Okay. And just remind it will the correct answer is option A. Goat liver and uh, <coughs> spirulina. So vitamin B12, the excellent supplementation will be liver. So usually the liver will have more amount of vitamin B12. And also spirulina. Spirulina is an algae. So usually this green algae, this type of algae, is, the spirulina is given a space food for the astronauts. So for them, they should need more amount of vitamin B12 for preventing the perinaceous anemia. That's why the spirulina is taken as a space food. So option A. Okay. 
and one more space food is there that is chlorella chlorella and spirulina both are space food that is also that question is also asked many times what is the space food and next duodenum has characteristic bruner glands which secretes two hormones what is that it can be a and t is there estrogen and progesterone wrong is yeah. it b yeah secretin and cholecystokinin right which one of the following pairs is not correctly matched just give a try for this i only know one is the i just know that vitamin b berry berry comes because we learned it when we were young mm, yeah this was the right answer okay then what is the incorrect they are asking which is not correctly matched i just told you vitamin b12 perinaceous anemia this is right yeah and just remind why for vitamin b3 you have to get pellagra not for vitamin b2 for vitamin b3 niacin will get pellagra okay next usually vitamin questions are more frequently asked in digestion and absorption i don't know why they skip okay i'll tell you tomorrow and next during prolonged fasting when the person is on prolonged fasting in which sequence are the following organic compounds are used so when and starving or dieting what is what is the series to be used is it first they use fat no first it use carbohydrates next fats next lastly proteins Okay. Initially, it will go with carbohydrates. If the carbohydrates are expelled, then it will go with fat. Next, finally, it will go with the protein. That's how the person will become lean only after two to uh, only after two weeks, because it takes around one to two weeks to come to the protein part. Our muscles are usually made up of protein. If the bodybuilders are being lacking their exercise, then they'll shrink the muscles because. of the protein digestion lastly it will be the proteins okay. stools of the person is whitish gray in color due to the malfunction of which organ uh okay kidney no it's liver liver will produce yeah. the bilirubin if okay the liver is being malfunctioning that the bilirubin will not be produced that will not come into the stools So the stools is greyish in color. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, hydrolytic enzymes which acts in the low pH. Hydrolytic enzyme. Okay. Hmm. It acts in the low pH. Means uh, the pH should be one point eight below seven. proteases proteases will act in the very low ph pepsin pepsin is a protease renin is a protease okay yes mm. continuous bleeding from the injured part okay it's okay i'll, I'll take it just remind this question i'll tell you so vitamin k we call it as uh, clotting so vitamin k is for blood clotting if vitamin k is being deficiency the blood will not clot properly so the person will be bleeding continuously the answer is vitamin k and next so which one is essential amino acid essential amino acid hmm. i don't know i i don't know the this, this one so. you don't know this one okay then just uh, take a note of that tomorrow we will be discussing about the vitamins and amino acids essential and non essential amino acids i'll tell you how to remind the essential and non essential amino acids with a mnemonic okay okay just note down these two points and next which food should be eaten during the deficiency of rhodopsin and i means vitamin a supplementation what we have to eat we need more amount of vitamin a carrot yeah carrot yeah the right answer is carrot and ripe papayas where the carotene will be more 
So for ripe papayas and carrot, you will have more amount of carotin. So the carotin in the carotin only you'll have the vitamin A, right? So we'll go with the today fifty questions. And in mammals, milk is digested by the action of renin. Yeah, right. A person who is eating boiled potato, his food contains the component. Starch. What? Potato. Potato has starch, right? Yeah, starch. Okay, okay. I I was hearing like a fat. Okay, starch, but they have given like starch, which is not digested, but the starch will get digested in our body, right? So this is not the right answer. B is not the right answer. Okay. Then what would be the right answer? Is it D? I'm not sure. Yeah, D. DNA. You will have the DNA, right? So DNA. It can be digested by pancreatic DNAs. Which part of the body secretes the hormone called secretin? Secretin is secreted by. Hello. One second. Yes. Secretin is secreted by. Yes, ma'am. Is it? Uh... I'm not. Uh, I think the answer should be between C or D. The the secretin just remind cholecystokinin and secretin both are produced from Bruner's glands. Bruner's glands is a characteristic feature of duodenum. That is the mucosa of duodenum. So answer is duodenum. Uh, secretin. Duodenum. No secretin. What? I couldn't get you. Secretin. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Vedika. Hello. Well, secretin and another hormone that you mentioned. Cholecystokinin. 